We referred to the fact that water is your biggest enemy. This is the actual electronic rotating portion of the electric fuel pump. Now, obviously, I've dissected this, and there's some pieces hanging off of it, but the part that's most damaged is right here. This is where the electrical contact occurs where the brushes. There's two brushes which mount on either side of this and uh, conduct the electricity to form the magnetic fields that make this spin. This area here, where you see this entire chunk of metal gone all the way around, this occurred because water got in the system. This was flat originally. The carbon arc brushes are held spring-loaded against here, so they're pushing in constantly towards the center of the commutator, and this is the commutator assembly itself. When water, this system, the fuel comes in from the tank, bathes this entire area, and then the impeller assembly, which we'll look at in a second, forces the fuel on up to the front. These pumps have very, very little suction capacity. That's why they're located so near the, pump, the gas tank itself. They're fed with a, uh, almost a half inch thick, a half inch diameter line to feed this because of the fact that it's virtually gravity feed up to this point. As the fuel passes over this, there's no oxygen involved. So any arc that occurs here is in an anaerobic condition so that there is no explosion. Just suffice it to know that if any oxygen gets in here by any reason, whether it goes dry or your system is whatever, if you've got water in the fuel or alcohol in the fuel, alcohol is a hydrocarbon just like the, the rest of the fuel. It burns, but water is not. Water is just hydrogen and oxygen. As the, as the hydrogen and oxygen hit this arcing area, the hydrogen is driven off and the oxygen then begins to burn this brass. It's called an EDM. It's an electro-discharge machining process, and you get one free every time you install water in your gas tank. This amount of metal, by the time this wears down to this point, the brush begins to burn. I'm going to turn this slowly until you get to the point where you see there's a big black spot. I don't know if that comes through there or not, but there's a shiny spot, and then it goes black into there. Whenever this pump came to a halt, on this point, the pump stalled. If you've ever gone out and had anybody tell you that they've gone out and wrapped on their fuel pump, what they did was they bounced this just enough to get a better contact with the brush, and it starts spinning, and the pump would run okay for a little while. If that happens, go right straight to your nearest Nissan dealer and get yourself a new pump, because you are going to be dead on the side of the road without a pump in a very short order. And this is what your problem is right here. These bearings here are sulfur lubricated. This is a brass bearing, and the carrying are here, and this bearing is up on the other end here. These are, there's, I've never seen a bearing go bad. I've never seen a winding burn up, but this is what kills 99 and 9 tenths of what we see when we finally take them apart. Water, water, water. Keep it out of your system. Do whatever you have to do. This is the impeller assembly. There's a top piece, and inside of this is a perfect example of why you do not want to take and let water get in. You have an impeller drive, which is turned like so by the pump itself. And I think you can see how that rotates inside of the system. Uh, in a moment, I'll take it apart and show you where the damage is. But for the moment, suffice it to say that this produces extremely high pressures by, by virtue of the fact that hydraulic pressure sneaks in behind these, each one of these individual ball bearings. They're little flat cylinders that are stuck between the outer rotating assembly and the inner rotating assembly. Outer rotating assembly, no such thing. Inner rotating assembly. I'm going to dump these out, pull these out over here on the paper. Each one of them is just a little cylinder. This piece here never seems to wear out. It seems to do just fine. But what happens is that water will get down right here, and it'll start to chatter and it causes the ball bearing to want to hang up. Now this edge here is totally smooth. The ball bearing wants to rotate smoothly through that area. But what happened in this one was that the ball bearing comes over and hangs up, and it wants to just stop right there. See how it's hanging up right there? Doesn't It stops there, and roll it to here, to here, and wants to just fall back in there. This Let's get a close up of that. Okay. okay. This, okay, closer. I, there. Okay. This area right here is the worn portion of this pump. Now understand, there's no way of seeing this from the outside. You literally have to dissect the pump, and most times you are unable to put it back together. So don't just take your pump apart to go in and see if this is what you're looking at, unless you absolutely know the pump is having problems. 
Most of the time, if the pump's got over 25,000 miles on it, it already has a certain degree of wear inside of this area already. This impeller, again, is just a simple series of rotating pressure generating pins. And I don't think we really need to worry about how it does it. Suffice it to say, it does a good job of it as long as it doesn't get dirty. Should be obvious to see from here that any contamination that gets down inside of this unit here can wreak havoc with it. Again, there's no filter up to this point that's capable of filtering all the contaminants that go into this pump. How they do as well as they do, as long as they do, is, is really a mute testimony to the strength and capacities of this pump. Again, no water, unless you've got lots of money for pumps. 